this is Rosemary from The Busy Budgeter, and we are here today to talk about home management systems. So if you've ever tried to figure out what a home management system is, it's basically one system to run all of the things in your home so that you can go do the things you actually care about, which whether it be hanging out with your husband, doing fun things with your kids, having a social life, girls weekends, girls nights in, whatever, we want to make it so that your whole life is not running your home because that's not the way it should be. A good home management system lets you limit the time that you spend on your home and go do all the other things that you care about. So then the question is, of course, isn't this kind of basic? Like, don't you just use the dish, wash the dish and put it away? It's not that hard, right? So for about half of the population, that's true. It's not that hard. For the other half, it's pretty hard. If you're like a type A personality, then it is pretty simple. You wash the dish, you use it, and then you put it away. If you're a type B personality or even a smaller subsection, what we call chronically disorganized, which most people don't really know the word chronically disorganized, so they wouldn't like self-identify as chronically disorganized. I know I didn't. Um, but so if you're one of these chronically disorganized type B people, then it's actually a lot harder than you would think. So you can tell, we've got a quiz to tell if you are chronically disorganized and I'll link below in the comments. But basically if you always kind of have a giant laundry pile and you can't really ever get ahead and if you do get ahead, you get behind again. If you always have dishes in the sink and it never actually reaches, we call it like dish zero, like inbox zero. You never really, re you never really reach dish zero. You're probably chronically disorganized. If your car usually has trash in it, you're probably chronically disorganized. So there's like nine identifiers that we use. Um, it can actually be up to 18 if you have sub, sub identifiers. But if you're, if you're that type of type B personality, then yeah, this is not super easy. Um, so what we do is, or what I did, all of this kind of came to a head because this is me, right? Everything that I'm talking about, totally me. I spent my whole life chronically disorganized, although I didn't know it. In fact, for a lot of it, I kind of thought that I was organized because I liked organizing. Liking organizing is a lot different from being organized. Liking organizing means that you think it would be pretty fun to get a new planner and to go through and like put washi tape all over it and color coordinate a lot of things. Like that's your idea of a fun night. Or even like you like the idea of implementing new systems, like finding new cleaning check sheets on Pinterest and like implementing those things. So that's liking organized. Now being organized is that if you purchase new clothes and you rip the tags off, do you walk the tags to the trash can or do you just kind of dump them wherever you are? If you dump them wherever you are, you're with me. You are also chronically disorganized. Yay, congratulations. Um, so if you're this chronically disorganized person, like I was, um, how do you get out of it? And how do you get a home management system that up and running that just takes care of all the stuff for you? And that was the situation that I was in. So I was a hot mess, chronically disorganized, just crawling over dishes and laundry and just budgeting nightmares every single day when I met the love of my life and we got married and we quickly discovered that he was actually worse than me in all of these things, which is weird, right? Cause you usually wear a polar, you marry your polar opposite, but apparently not. Um, and so what we were polar opposite in is clean floors. And to this day, Jonathan Groner loves clean floors and I can walk over Cheerio shrapnel every single day, not even know it. So that's been a super fun transition. So we're in this situation, right? And we're like, we've got all of this credit card debt. We just got married. We're like so disorganized, it's not even funny. We're trying to get ahead on our budget so that we can pay off all of this debt because I wanted to be able to come home when I got pregnant, stay home with my firstborn child. And we're realizing every time we set this budget, we blow it within like a couple of days. Like it's zero willpower with both of us high impulse, like we just cannot get it together. So we start to look at why is this happening? And we realize that a lot of the problem comes from, it's almost like this, this, this snowball effect, right? So it's like, it's not the fact that we can't stop eating out. It's that there's constantly dishes in our sink. We have no idea what we need to cook the meal. We don't have time to cook the meal. We think we're gonna cook the meal and then we get extended at work. So now we really don't have time to cook the meal and we end up going out anyway. So we realized that the, um, the level of organization in our lives was severely affecting the budget. So what we did 
was we just decided to just go nuts one day. And this was after trying and failing and trying and failing for, for years. We finally got smart and we're like, all right, we're gonna work with our personality. That means that willpower, not a thing. We don't have it. We've already proven that we don't have it time and time again. It's one thing to be like, I'm gonna do it this time. This is the time that I'm gonna do it. But in that moment, when you want something, like when you're coming home from work and you're exhausted, you're going to do what you want in that moment. And it doesn't usually involve cleaning or cooking. So whatever system we were gonna do had to work with our personality. Type B, no willpower, kind of a little bit impulsive. And then the second thing was we were gonna incentivize everything we do, which got a little tricky because one, we're trying to save money, so we can't really incentivize with money. And two, we both have a few pounds to lose, so we couldn't really incentivize with food. So what do you incentivize with? That's my favorite. We're gonna get to that in a second. And then the third is we're only gonna do what matters. So I'm a big fan of the 80-20 principle, and that basically says that 80% of the results come from 20% of the actions. So you can save a lot of time and stress in your life if you just skip the 80% and just do the 20%. So the last thing was that we started only doing the things that matter, but in the right order. So I don't wanna bore you with the details, but basically there's two types of routines in the world. There's simple routines and there's complex routines. Simple routines don't really need anything else to get accomplished. So simple routines are things like the laundry, right? I could, I could have you in a completely trashed house and I could say, go do a little laundry. You're not gonna really have any uh, like barriers to getting that laundry done. You can like wade through the, tr the trash and the mess, stick in a load of laundry, switch it over and be good to go. But if I were to tell you, if I were to drop you in this trashy house and say, okay, I want you to go uh, make dinner tonight for six, you're gonna be like, uh, I don't know what to cook. I don't know what's expired. Like the entire kitchen is trashed. I have no spatulas. I have no pans. There's like, what? No, I can't do that. So that is a more complex routine. Now, fun fact, whenever you get to like New Year's Eve resolutions or anytime anybody's like, I'm gonna make big changes in the world, they always say complex routines. Budgeting, cleaning, meal planning, all of these things are always complex routines. So nobody ever says like, man, this New Year's, I'm gonna do laundry every single day. It's gonna be amazing. Nobody says that. Everybody's like, I'm gonna completely transform my budget or I'm gonna lose 95 pounds, it's gonna be amazing. So, simple routines, we're gonna master first and then we're gonna complex routines. So this was seven years ago, seven years ago, which is just nuts, it's nuts. Anyway, it worked. <laughs> when I say it worked, I mean it worked. In the beginning, like a couple days in, I'm like, wow, this is kind of easy but we didn't know what the long-term results were gonna be yet. So we weren't like too excited. And then a few more days in, a few weeks in, a few months in, we were like, oh my gosh, this is working. This is working. And then, so now it's been seven years. We still do the same things that we had set up back then. So I'm gonna give you a brief overview of how to set up a home management routine for you that's just gonna rock it. Particularly if you were this type B personality that is struggles kind of with getting this stuff under control. All right, so the first thing is automation. Automation means we're gonna save as much time as possible because one, you have no time for anything new, especially to incorporate a home management program. You don't have time for that. So the first thing is we save a bunch of time. We do that by automating as much as humanly possible in your life. And there's a lot of different ways that we can do this. And I'm gonna to link to a post where we go a little bit more in depth for it. And we even have a course that goes in like way deep into beyond that. So if you're like, I don't wanna figure it out. I just want you to tell me what to do and when to do it. We even have a whole course for that. It's called Hot Miss to Home Success. I'll link that below in the bottom too. But the post is free and that'll go into a lot of stuff too. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to, um, for me, this is gonna, automation looks a little bit different for everyone because it's gonna depend on what you're wasting your time on. But for me, it was A-B testing grocery delivery. And this was back in the days where you had to like actually pay for grocery delivery, like a fairly good amount. But because I was saving so much money in impulse purchases and I was saving hours every week in the store, grocery delivery was a huge win for us, a huge win. And then going beyond grocery delivery, there's also um, prescription mail delivery. There's pretty much every errand that you can run in the world can be automated so that you're no longer spending time from it. So what this did in my life was I went from 
running all these errands every week, a lot of them last minute, like, oh, I've got to go to the post office and I've got to go to the grocery store and then I've got to pick up the kids and then I have to drop the dog off to the vet and then somehow I have to get to soccer practice. All of that just went away and I didn't have to do anything any day, which is pretty exciting. So now when I have to do one thing, I'm like, oh my God, I can't do it. Yeah, fun fact. Okay, so when do we eliminate all of this stuff? The other thing we're gonna do is you put together a stock room, which is stock room is all of the things you need to run your life, everything, everything that needs to run your house. So it's deodorant, shampoo, dog food, all of the things. And when you do that, you're gonna set it all up to be delivered, home delivery, just like your groceries. And what that does is it stabilizes those, those costs. So again, you're not going crazy with all of these extra purchases that you don't need. So then you're gonna go a little bit further. And now like we've saved a bunch of time and we're like, our stress level, once you get through automation, your stress level goes like, just like that. I mean, it's pretty cool. And also you have free time. John and I always joke that whenever we get to a point like, or at least when we were doing this and we got to the point where like most of the chaos went away, we were like, we should get a dog. And of course we did because <laughs> there's like this weird lull where you're like, you're so used to feeling stress and chaos that you almost want to recreate it. Like you're like, we're bored. We should have more stuff. Anyway, fun fact. Okay. So then you go into foundation, which is dishes, laundry, and schedule book. So dishes, laundry, and schedule book is literally the foundation that holds the entire home management system up. Those are also your simple routines. They're pretty easy to complete. Um, the, the secret to this is don't overdo it. You do one load of dishes every single day, hand wash the big giant bowls and pots. When you hand wash them right away after you use them, they take seconds. It's like brainless how easy it is. And we even have really, really detailed posts about how to hand wash dishes, fun facts. If, in case you don't know, because I actually didn't know when I started. Um, and then laundry, all you're gonna do is wash yesterday's clothes and you're not gonna like do 20 loads to catch up and then do yesterday's loads. All you're gonna do is just wash yesterday's clothes and if most families, unless you have a huge family, in which case we'll talk about different things you could do in the post, you're gonna wash yesterday's clothes and you're going to fit in anything extra so you're gonna catch up slowly over time. It might take you a month to catch up. That's totally fine. One a day, that's it. Um, and then the last thing is you're gonna do a schedule book. Now, we have polled our audience so many times, it's not even funny, and almost universally, anyone that fits into this like type B personality, hot mess personality, they're gonna do better with a paper planner. The exception of the rules, if you're already rocking like a Google calendar or an I iPhone calendar, that's fine. If you're already using it successfully and not just for work, important caveat, then um, you could just keep doing that. But everybody else, you need a paper planner. I don't care if you print a free one out on the internet. We've got one. I don't care if you get one from the Dollar Tree. I don't care if you buy a $50 life planner. Whatever works for you, you just need to have a paper planner. And then you get into this, to this mode of you checking that calendar every single day and not filling in all of the things into the calendar, just the important things that actually matter. Okay, so now we've got dishes, laundry, schedule book, that's our foundation. When all else fails, we just worry about foundation. So the whole house can be covered in dirt and chaos and all of, all of the horrible things, but we don't care about any of that. All we care about are dishes, laundry, and schedule book. I don't care if the house is falling down around your ears, just do the dishes, laundry, and schedule book. And then once you get that mastered, you move on to meal planning and meal planning I don't care how many times you have tried and failed at meal planning before, once you get that foundation and automation under control, it's like meal planning it is so much easier now. It's ridiculous. And so there's a million and one meal plans all over Pinterest, right? And they've never worked. I've literally tried them all. And it's because it's not the plan, it's who I am. Those meal plans are created for people that are organized. And it's really just a small switch for them. For me, that wasn't gonna work because everything else in my life was not supporting that, if that makes sense. So now that we've got all this stuff under control, we can meal plan. Now we do teach it a little bit different. We teach simplified meal plan, which basically I'll give you the gist of this. So I'm gonna put it in a blog post because it would take me a really long time to work through it. But basically you don't plan for specific days. It's not like Monday we're gonna have this, Tuesday we're gonna have this. You don't have complicated sides. Your sides are usually like frozen veggies, salads, fresh fruit, that's it. You're not making like Mediterranean couscous chicken something with a with an asparagus lemon side. Like it's usually just 
whatever you're into. So if you're coming from fast food, you are not going to make a successful transition from McDonald's to kale smoothies in one day. Not going to happen. Don't care who you are. So you may have to transition from McDonald's to chicken tenders at home. And that's the other thing that we learned is like, that's so that is totally okay. If you need to make that jump that way and then slowly transition into healthier food, the important part is that we get you out of the McDonald's line and then we can take our time getting you to whole foods or healthy foods or wherever you need to be. Um, so that's another big factor. The other thing is that we always take into account our schedule super realistically, right? So when we're planning out our meals for the week and we see we've got soccer practice on Wednesday night or we've got a work meeting or we're probably gonna have overtime on whatever day, we're just gonna say we're gonna eat out that day. Like there's nothing wrong with planning that into your schedule rather than like thinking, oh, I'm gonna come home after that really long day and I'm gonna make my Mediterranean couscous chicken. Like that's not gonna happen. We both know it's not gonna happen, right? On that day of, you will totally be in the Chick-fil-A line. So we're just gonna call it early and we're gonna say we're having Chick-fil-A that night and we're gonna pick out what we're gonna eat and you're gonna budget it and you're going to put it on your meal plan and call it a day. And that is totally fine. We just do that all the time. The other thing is we're gonna introduce uh, two things that are huge, huge. The first is 15 minute meals. And those are meals that probably taste a little bit like the fast food you're used to that take almost no time to make. They don't even require recipes. So fun fact, we've had over 18 million readers on our blog, right? And our 15 minute recipes go nuts, right? Everybody on Pinterest is pinning these things. They've got hundreds of thousands of pins but no one ever reads the post because you can tell how to make it by just looking at the photos. It's hilarious, but we still do it because 15 minute meals are a huge, huge factor in success. But you don't need the recipe. You can just look at the picture and be like, oh, I can make that for dinner tonight. It's more of like an inspiration. Um, the second thing is, um, oh, also they take less time than fast food, huge bonus. Okay, the next thing is backup meals because I don't care how well laid your plans are, they're gonna be, they're gonna go badly. So with backup meals, basically, no matter how good your plan is, no matter how you're like, oh, I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna be home and I'm gonna make this, those plans are gonna go, are gonna go awry. Either something's gonna change at the last minute, you're just gonna get tired, somebody's gonna get sick. Those are the days where you're caving to Chick-fil-A and to pizza and to Chinese. And if you have a backup meal that you like at home, that's super simple to make, that requires zero effort, um, and they're shelf stable. So it's like, if you don't use it tomorrow or even this month, it's not really a big deal, you were golden. So backup meals can be anything. My favorite one is actually pre-cooked frozen cowboy burgers. They're, we make them ahead of time and we actually stick them in the freezer, complete with buns, and then you just stick them in the oven and preheat them. We're a little fancier now. Like back in the day when we were first started, this would have been chicken tenders, this would have been spaghetti, this would have been, um, oh gosh, one of our readers is like, their favorite backup meal is Chef Boyardee canned ravioli. I kid you not. So depending on what you're, how, like how healthy you eat, how far you are out of the McDonald's line is gonna depend on what you consider to be a backup meal. But the most important part is that we're shifting out of the pizza thing. And if you're worried about, oh, well, that's so unhealthy, so is McDonald's, guys. And because I did this mental thing for a long time where it was like, oh, I was either on and eating super healthy or I was in the Chick-fil-A and McDonald's line. And there wasn't really like any in between. And 15 minute meals was the only thing that shifted us out of that. We were eating only 15 minute meals for almost an entire year. But by the time that year was up, and I don't think you have to do a year, we were slow learners. Um, by the time the year was up, like I had no problem cooking at home. I was completely adjusted to that. And so I could move on to healthier and healthier meals. At the time that I'm recording this, we've been eating healthy for probably about two or three years now. So, and I mean super healthy. Um, so it's a big difference, it's a huge difference. Um, okay, so now that we've got the backup meals straight, let's talk about the next thing. Now you've got the meal plan under control, now budgeting, and it's the same thing, right? Like meal planning, you try and fail, you try and fail, you get the other stuff under control, and then boom. Budgeting, same thing. <laughs> tried and failed millions of times, but when I got all these other stepping stones on, I go to do it, first time. First time it was easy. Now. 
Does that mean that I didn't have to work at it and like, you know, Mary Poppins came in my window and like did it for me? No, you still have to work at it. But it worked the first time without any major issues. It was huge. So the way that we budget is that we incentivize everything. And because again, we can't count on willpower. So if you need to save money, we're gonna figure out what you spent last month, right? Not, you probably overspent, you probably put something on credit cards, whatever. We're gonna figure out what you spent and we're going to say whatever you reduce that from, you get to give 20% to blow it on whatever you want, anything you want. And what we found was that almost universally with our readers, where they were blowing money was not on things they cared about. They all blew money on food because they thought that they could, it was justified, right? They were like, they would do okay with like not going out and blowing like ridiculous things that they wanted, but then it would seep out in coffee and food and little things that they thought that they, well, I mean, I have to feed everybody, right? It's not my fault. So there was this mentality going on the same people that failed at budgeting, that could never stick to a budget ever, over and over and over again, when we taught them how to incentivize to keep 20% of whatever they were able to save from last month, all of a sudden, boom, these are the guys that are like feeding their family rice and beans and are like so on strict on their budget, it's not even funny. Also, don't feed your family rice and beans for a month. That's never actually happened. But the point is, is that it's, it's a surefire way to make somebody that kind of sucks at budgeting like a super budgeter, particularly if you dole out those incentives weekly. The reason why it works is because a month is a long time to wait for a reward. That's usually a little bit too long. But if in the beginning you're doling out that, let's say you have $150 to spend on groceries every week. You spend 100, you take 20% of the 50. You spend 80, you take 20% of the 50. If you eat it out of your pantry in your freezer and you spend zero, you make you get 20% of the 150. Huge, huge, huge difference. So in addition to that, we also teach 80% um, of that. Every single time you reduce your spending, even though you've got all of this money to blow, you're also putting 80% of that into debt at first, then investments, an emergency fund. Emergency fund actually comes first, but. Um, so you have all of this money. So in your mind, and what it felt like to us was really like, we are blowing so much money. Like we're trying to save money, but we're spending all of these things. Like we're buying all of these things. But the difference was we were always buying all of those things. We just never had anything to show for it. Now we're buying things that we're actually excited about and we're putting more towards savings and more towards debt and more towards investing than we ever have before. So it's this crazy mental shift where like, it like it took a lot to come up with it because we just A-B tested everything until we found something that works, but it sounds really weird until you put it into practice and you're like, wow, like mind blown, that's huge. Okay, so I can talk about this forever, I'm sorry. So now we've got the budgeting done, boom, right? Oh, and I should also say, and we'll talk about more of this, I'll link to this in the post, but we also teach this like really overly simplified way of budgeting because one, most of your overspending only happens in two categories. Um, most of your categories are stable every month. So why do you need a budget with 50 different lines that you have to then keep up and track? And even when you do things like cash envelope, like let's say you have $50 for clothing every month, you're always just gonna take the money out of the clothing and put it into something else anyway. Like when you do cash envelopes, it's like a constant shift of money where, oh, I did this too much over here, I'm gonna move this. So we kind of simplified everything and now it just goes to five categories. They're super easy. There's only really two categories that have overspending. Everything else is pretty much savings and that's discretionary spending and then food spending. Those are the two that you have to focus on. Set expenses are just your monthly expenses. Those are stable every single month. You can go through and reduce all of those, but for the most part, it's stable. And then um, net worth is actually things that you want to spend more money on. So net worth is if you can spend the most money in net worth, that is awesome. Those are things like, um, the net worth is things like your mortgage, your credit card debt, investment, savings, retirement. Like if you can spend tons of money in net worth, like that is awesome. Okay, so going into that, that's we'll get through the budgeting part. I get really, really jazzed up about this stuff. So then we're gonna go into the cleaning, right? And the cleaning is last because once you get the dishes in the laundry and the schedule book under control, the cleaning is not gonna bother you as much as you think it will. Now in our case, 
even though John is super bad at like organization, John really appreciates a clean floor. I mean, loves the scrub floor. And I could walk over Cheerio shrapnel for days and not even know that it exists. So that was like a little source of contention. Like even after we got the budgeting and everything, like we'd stopped having the money fights, but we were still having the clean floor fights. Um, and so once I'm very systems oriented, so once the, all the systems were in place in the house, I didn't even care. I mean, if it were up to me, I wouldn't have even done the cleaning. I would have just been happy in my creatively messy house with all my systems running and been thrilled. But John really wanted a cleaning system. So we did that too. We 80, 20 did it. We only focused on the things that mattered and we basically went through and we listed all of the things that we actually cared about. Like the things that impacted our, our life, the things that we thought that people that came over that we cared about would notice. I don't really care about it, but John did. Um, and then we came up with a really simple system of how do we do, how do we put the least amount of effort into this and still get results where if we look around our house, we really like it. And this is gonna require a lot of individualization. And if you end up getting the course, we go through a lot of this in the course because so like one of the things that mattered to me was I like decorating. I it could be the cleanest house in the world, but if it isn't pretty, I could, it's, I'm never going to maintain it because I really just don't care. But I love Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. There's a cow in my office because I love Hobby Lobby. So what we figured out was like, okay, like we're going to do this cleaning system, but I get to decorate. And then that's what we did. So, and then you come up with a really, really short list of chores. You basically fig figure out you're gonna do a 15 minute chore every day, no more than 15 minutes. You don't have to do one every day. You do 15 minute decluttering session because 90% of your problem is not cleaning, it's decluttering. If you remove this stuff out of the house, and we go into this in detail, this has been running on for a while, but if you remove this stuff out of the house, it actually cleans itself naturally. And what I mean by that is that there's places to put things. A lot of the reason why we live in trashed houses is because there was no place to put things. So like when you rip the, the um, tags off the clothes, the reason why you don't go and bring it to the trash can is because half the time you go to the trash can, the trash is overflowing or you only have one trash can in the house and it's three things over and there's already trash on the floor. So why don't you just shove it on the floor? So when you start decluttering, when you put together these systems, a lot of it is fixed for you. And then we do this five minute pickup every day, which we always do after dinner, you could do any time. This five minute pickup, all you do is you play some fun music. The kids love, is it Old Town Road? Oh, it's on repeat every day anyway. Um, and then you just do this quick five minute pickup of the rooms. And you can tell when you're picking up after yourself because some days you have the five minute pickup and there's literally nothing to do. We're like, <laughs> there's nothing to do and it's the coolest thing because I was the type of person that just lived in a trash house for most of my life so it's crazy to be like we have five minutes to pick up and there's nothing to pick up it's awesome okay so I've kind of run out a lot longer than I thought I was going to but let me give you some links for more information so down below is a link to the hot mess I'm sorry there's a link to the home management post the post is a little bit longer but just in case you're not into reading, this gives you a really good overview to talk about what we're gonna talk about. And then if you want the full depth, there is a Hot Mess to Home Success course, and this goes like, it not only does a deep dive, but it's also not overwhelming. So because we start with automation, we're just basically gonna remove five hours a day of stuff that you're doing. No matter who you are or what you've got going on, we're gonna remove five hours of, of, your, of your time every day. Give you back five hours of time? I don't know how to say that. We're going to make it easier, five hours easier every single day. And then we're going to take an hour of your day to start putting together these systems. The systems don't ever get more than an hour. So no matter what, at the end of all of this, you're going to end up with way more time. So I'm gonna be uh, leaving comments below. I'm gonna leave in the comments below a link to the home management post where we go into a little bit deeper detail for each of these things. But I'm also going to leave you a link to Hot Mess to Home Success, which is a super, super in-depth course. So if you're the type where you're like, I'm already really overwhelmed and I really just want someone to hold my hand through all this thing and just do every single step, just walk me through it and like teach me what to do and when, 
Thomas Till Home Success is amazing for that. Um, because again, we start with automation, we just remove all of that stuff from your life. We remove at least five hours a day of stuff that you really don't need to be doing and we replace it with things for cheap, easy, um, and then that gives you time, one, just to breathe, because let's be honest, you really just need time to breathe and just go a little bit slower. And then second, it gives you time to do the course. And the course, like the entire system, once you're completed with the course, well, first of all, even while you're in the course, this is never gonna take more than one hour a day. So we're removing five hours a day, we're putting one hour back in, and then you're immediately seeing results starting in the first day and the first week. And by the first month, your entire life has changed so that once you get through the course um, and all of the pieces are in place, you're still only doing one hour a day. So the one thing that we hear from people over and over and over again is, I can't believe how much money I saved and I still get to buy things, which is weird. And I can't believe how much time I have to myself, which is like the, best thing to hear because, and I know what that feels like because I, I went through this too, but we have so much stuff that we are responsible for. And I went for years feeling like this is life. Life is dishes and laundry and cooking and then going to bed too late and waking up too early and just doing it on an endless repeat until you die. And to all of a sudden have, you know, that's how I built this business. We've had over 18 million readers on Busy Budget or teaching people who are that type of personality, how to budget and how to get organized. And it's crazy because all of this literally came from all of that, like just learning how to manage the house and then having free time and figuring out what I wanted to do with it. So. It's just been a crazy journey and I'm getting all goofy again. But anyway, so if you uh, would like, you just want to go right in, you want to deep dive into the course, I'll put the link below that as well. And if you have any questions, I would love to hear them. Leave me a comment and I will try to get them answered. Okay, thanks. Bye.